me. Welcome back to Marvelous Videos, I'm Rylan, and today we will be taking a look at the most terrifying experiment in the history of science, from Altered States Explored. Mad as hell, weird, and then we have Altered States. Altered States was directed by Ken Russell and released in 1980. It is a science fiction body horror film based on playwright and screenwriter Patty Chayefsky's novel of the same name. Patty Chayefsky was regarded as one of Hollywood's sharpest and brightest screenwriters after winning three Oscars. But soon after winning the Academy Award for Network in 1976, he snuck away to Boston to begin work on his one and only novel. What are you looking for? Well, it looks to me like the architecture is somewhat ab. This guy's a fucking gorilla. The 1978 novel, Altered States, was loosely based on the work of John Cunningham Lilly, the neuroscientist who invented the isolation tank and pioneered New Age dolphin research. It was about a physiologist who uses sensory deprivation and hallucinogenic drugs to push the limits of human consciousness to the breaking point. It was a severe and insightful novel that became a bestseller. William Hurt and Drew Barrymore made their cinematic debuts in this film. The film became somewhat infamous for a falling out between Russell and Chayefsky. It got so serious that Chayefsky actually dropped out of the project and replaced his name with Sidney Aaron, his real first and middle names. So, in today's video, we're going to dive deeper into this story and why it became so popular. Before we get into it, however, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is just a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thanks! Now, let's begin. When he heard his cry for help, it wasn't human. Altered States, 1980. Altered States opens with a close-up shot of a shirtless William Hurt, with wires sticking out of his hair and his head contained in a fish tank. The scene leaves one with a rather unsettling feeling, but it accurately sets the mood for the rest of the film. While it is Hurt's debut film, his acting certainly doesn't show it. The movie follows a Harvard scientist, Edward Jessup, a schizophrenia researcher and psychopathologist. While researching schizophrenia, our psychopathologist's protagonist begins to believe that our other states of consciousness are as real as our waking states. It is not a surprise, really, when he becomes enthralled by the idea of alternate states of awareness. With the help of two like-minded researchers, Arthur Rosenberg and Mason Parrish, he begins experimenting with sensory deprivation, using a flotation tank to experiment with sensory deprivation. His experiments include conducting tests on himself using a hallucinogenic drug and an isolation chamber, which we find out later might be causing him to genetically regress. Do we have any communication? Oh sure, I kept checking you out like you told me to. Like most academics, he meets Emily, a fellow whiz kid who is also a Cornell University classmate at a faculty party. She can clearly be pegged as Jessup's type based on his actions and behavior. Furthermore, it becomes apparent when he says, Anthropology seems to attract good-looking women. She comes on to him seconds later, asking things like, You believe craziness is just another level of consciousness? Which obviously reels him in even more. The question that Emily raises pertains more to the film than to the audience. After all, lunacy, as we see, is the state of being in which the cinematic universe exists. In altered states, anything is possible. And this film goes on to prove us just that. Well, human life doesn't have great truths. We're born in doubt, we spend our lives persuading ourselves we're alive. And we fast forward to seven years now, and Edward and Emily have two daughters. Unfortunately, they are on the verge of divorce when they reunite with the couple that first introduced them at the party. Edward flies to Mexico to attend a ceremony held by the Hinchi tribe after finding out that members of the tribe have shared similar hallucinogenic states that he too had experienced during his experiments. While he is in Mexico, Edward hires a guide, Eduardo. They climb up into the Hinchy Hill country, a plateau covered in spectacular mushroom-shaped ventifacts, where Eduardo tells him that the Hinchy use a potion containing the sacred mushroom Amanita muscaria and the shrub Chinicuichi, also known as Hemia salicifolia, which they are collecting to use in the next year's ceremonies. This shrub can trigger deep memory states because of which the tribe has given it the Hinchi name, which means first or primordial flower. An indigenous elder, dubbed the Brujo in the movie, is seen holding a root, probably a Hemia root, in his hand. He asks Edward to hold the root before cutting his hand to add some blood to the combination he is cooking. Shortly after drinking the concoction, Edward has weird and severe hallucinations, including one of Emily and himself being petrified and then eroded by blown sand. 
Edwards leaves the Hinchi Plateau under a cloud the following day. After having murdered a large specimen of the Hinchi's sacred monitor lizard while inebriated by the concoction, a dream sequence shows that the natives believe that the monitor lizard to have given them the sacred mushroom in the mythic past, which is shown in rock carvings. He returns to the United States with a sample of the Hinchi potion for study by his colleagues and additional self-experimentation because he obviously hasn't realized the intensity of the effects despite the reaction he experienced, so he continues to consume it to further his exploration of altered states of consciousness. Common aphasia, time, space, fallout from the hallucination, you are a fucking f While the film's obsession with LSD-infused psychedelia may make it seem like a cliched 60s nostalgia trip, the opening title sequence alone remains as relevant today as it did almost 40 years ago when it was first released. While never as straightforward or moralistic as an anti-drug film, the story of a scientist succumbing to a dangerous research obsession is tinged with broader cultural concerns about a return to the 1960s dippy hippie mysticism, far from what was hoped to be the comparatively enlightened decade to come in 1980. When increased dosage becomes unsafe due to toxic quantities of the chemical, Edward returns to sensory deprivation, believing it will boost the benefits of the medication at his current level. Edward utilizes a derelict tank in a medical school to have a series of more terrifying visions, including one of early Homendai while repairing it. Edward, who is being watched by his co-workers, claims that his visions have externalized. Ah, oh, stop talking shit! You trying to say your dumb hallucination is externalized? What do you write? Edward now insists on being x-rayed before he reconstitutes, his mouth bloodied, and hurriedly makes notes before he is unable to talk. A radiologist who examined the x-rays concluded that they belonged to a gorilla. Edward goes through physical biological de-evolution in later studies. He emerges from the isolation tank as a feral, small-statured, light-skinned caveman at one point rampaging through the town's streets before resuming his regular shape. Edward's co-workers are stunned by an energy wave unleashed by the experiment, which thankfully also destroys his tank. Edward persists in his efforts despite his co-workers' concerns. Edward has a more profound retreat in his final experiment, evolving into an amorphous mass of an aware primeval substance, which honestly reminds us a little bit of an amoeba. When Emily arrives, the tank has been replaced with a spinning vortex. She explores the vortex looking for Edward, finding him just as he is about to transform into a non-physical form of proto-consciousness and possibly vanish from our version of reality. Edward is brought home by his buddies in the hopes that the transformations will stop. However, he begins to uncontrollably regress once more, with the mutations no longer requiring the ingestion of first flower, or even sensory deprivation for that matter. Emily clutches Edward's hand urging him to fight the shift, and is soon engulfed by Edward's primeval force. The sight of Emily, who appears to be being consumed by the energy, awakens Edward's devolving form's human consciousness. He resists the metamorphosis and reverts to his original human state. As Emily returns to normal, Edward embraces her. The central topic of altered states is the human desire to leave the body behind, be reborn, and experience things that were once considered heavenly in mind. William Hurt's outstanding performance as Jessup conveys this intellectual's unbashed egotism as well as his Promethean desire to unravel life's mysteries. On a side note, you should definitely check out the works of John Lilly, Robert Ornstein, Andrew Wheel, Carlos Castaneda, E.L. Masters, Aldous Huxley, and John Huston if they are interested in the subject of altered states of consciousness. The entire film is a stunning concept, but Altered States doesn't slow down to accommodate it. It develops into a farce just as soon as it starts sounding like a 1960s psychedelic vision, a head trip. When a scientist spends too much time in his tank, he regresses to a simian state, physically transforming into an ape, attacks campus security guards, is chased into the local zoo by a pack of wild dogs, and kills and eats a sheep for supper before reverting back to the benevolent Professor Jessup, our own version of the intellectual Hulk. As a matter of fact, I have. I don't know how you've put up with me all these years. Why should you watch The Altered States? This film is an enticing enigma. It draws one in like a tornado, except you enjoy every second of it. It is a weird film, but it challenges not only the perceptions of reality, but also gives us a terrifying perspective on our bodies and brains. It has a Lovecraftian feel to it, with the rapidly decaying and regressing nature of Jessup's body. It feels scary to watch, since every aspect of it is so wildly unknown and unexplored. It gives a wonderfully chilling feeling throughout. The film is divided into three main components, science, spectacular effects, 
and the professor's love relationship with his wife. The science is presented in a delectable manner. We learn about the total immersion, genetics, and radical memory as much as we need to know, which is next to none. The extraordinary effects are then presented in four long sections and a few quick bursts. They're excellent. They are meant to evoke the birth of the universe in a throbbing celestial ovum, and they may remind you of the sound and light spectacle at the end of 2001. Dr. Jessup is at the center of the image, his body pulsing in and out of an ape shape, his mouth drawn into an anguished O as he screams the hell of birth. The soundtrack reinforces these sequences, which are clearly meant to feed the next generation of cinema cultist chemically altered consciousness. Then, of course, we have the matter of the professor's love relationship with his wife, and it's here that we can see how strong love's magnetism can be. Despite filing for divorce, he continues to show this magnetism. It is his wife who wades into the cosmic mists, goes up to her knees in eternity, reaches in and pulls him out during the professor's final experiment when he is vanishing into a terrible vortex of light and cries on the laboratory floor. The professor transforms into a protoplasm of life itself. In contrast, his wife transforms into the brilliant shell of a rock-like flesh, with her inner fires glowing through the fissures in the last scene. And the effect is something like an overheated Spider-Man. As the professor, as man, bangs on the wall and crawls towards her, she reaches out, and the world rocks. The man within him bursts out of the ape protoplasm, and the woman within her explodes back into flesh, and they collapse into each other's arms. Russell creates a story about the fascination and eventual hazards of meddling with the buried enigmas of the unconscious. The altered states requires that the viewers yield to the force of these hallucinations nearly as much as Jessup does, and Russell reveals in the hyper-theatricality and extravagant symbolism that seem to have become his trademark as a director. From this vantage point, altered states' textures and surfaces reveal as much about Russell's vision as the plot or the characters. Like most of his films, this is a film to feel and sense your way through. And no one did it quite like Roger Ebert, the director of The Lighthouse. We've covered that before, so go check it out. Ebert so aptly put it, Altered States was the movie Ken Russell was born to direct. It is a beautifully created movie despite the conflicts between Chayefsky and Russell. It is genuinely a movie well beyond its time. It gives a subtle message about drug abuse without being political or offensive while weaving a terrifying tale of fiction. It is a must watch for people who enjoy slow burn insanity and Russell and William Hurt have both done a great job on the film. What are your thoughts on the movie? If you've seen it before that is, let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to send a like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. For Marvelous Videos, I'm Rylan. Have a good one, be safe, and thanks for watching. If I had Eddie, you made it real, you can make it unreal.